This is section 5.4, dividing decimals. And division of decimal numbers is a lot like division of whole numbers. The only difference is where we put the decimal point in our quotient. So if our divisor is a whole number, we divide just like we do with whole numbers, and then we put our decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal point in our dividend. Here's an example of what that looks like. If we have our division set problem set up this way so that we're doing long division, then we're going to go through and do this division just as though our dividend were a whole number. Then when we get all the way done, we're going to go back in and put our decimal point directly above where it was in our dividend. The other part of this is, if the divisor is not a whole number, then we need to move our decimal point to the right in our divisor until we have a whole number. We do that all before we start dividing. So here's an example of what that would look like. If our divisor is 6.3, this is not a whole number. So before we even start dividing, we're going to move our decimal point to the right as many times as we need to until we have a whole number. This time we would only need to move it once. When we do that, we also have to move the decimal point in the same number of places in our dividend. So if we move it once here, then we have to move it once there. Here's what we, this would look like once we moved our decimal point. And then we can go ahead and do our division. And again, we put our decimal point in our quotient right above where it is in our dividend. So let's go through the steps of dividing by a decimal. And we'll do an example as we go through. Our example is 8 tenths divided by 2 hundredths. So first of all, since our divisor is not a whole number, we're going to have to move our decimal point. So let's set our problem up this way. So underneath our division box, we have our 8 tenths. And then out here, we have our 2 hundredths. So this is the one that we need to change so that it's a whole number. So to do that, we're going to move our decimal point over two places. That means that we have to do the same thing to this one. So we're going to move it over once, twice. The decimal point is going to be right there. And it's very important that you write in the decimal point in its new, new location. To do that, we have to actually add a 0 here. OK, so now let's rewrite this just so that it's a little bit more clear. Now this on the outside is just a 2. On the inside, we just have 80. And our decimal point is actually right there. Now we can just go ahead and do the division. So 2 goes into 8 four times. Now we go back and multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. That gives us 80. And then we're subtracting. 80 minus 80 is 0. Now remember, in our final answer, we need to put our decimal point in. And this is actually a good reminder that you need to put another 0 here as a placeholder in your 1's place. So our quotient is actually 40. The final answer to this problem of this division is 40. Let's do a couple more examples. Now this one, notice that our divisor is already a whole number. So we don't have to move the decimal point at all. We can just start dividing. And we're going to just ignore this decimal point until we get to the end of our problem. And then we'll put it in the correct place. So we're comparing 26 with 78. And let's see, I'm going to guess that the, that goes into 78 three times. So now we have to multiply it back out. 6 times 3 is 18. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So it worked out. It went into that exactly three times. Now we're subtracting. So we have a 6 here, a two, 2 here, and then the rest of this is zeros. So now we're comparing our 26 with this 26. But notice the place we're in. We're here, which means we need to write a 0 in as a placeholder there. We, we actually skipped a place in our division. So 26 goes into 26 once. Then we have 1 times 26 is 26. And so we get a remainder of 0. Now we're going to go back and put our decimal point in. It was here, so we're going to put it right above there, which makes it, in this place, to the left of the 3. We can write our answer this way, so we have 301 thousandths.
All right, one more. Now in this time, in this one we have some negative decimal numbers. Notice that we have two negatives, and remember when you're dividing, if you have two negatives, then your quotient will be a positive number. So we can just forget about those negatives that are there since we know our quotient will be positive. Here's what our division problem looks like. Now our divisor again is not a whole number, so we're going to have to move our decimal point one over to the right. We have to do the same thing here. So let's rewrite this just so that we're clear about what we have. That's the result of moving our decimal point over to the right one place. So now we're comparing we're trying to figure out how many times 361 would go into 1,411, and I'm going to guess it goes in there four times. So we have 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 6 is 24. If we carry the 2, and we have 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So, oops, I overestimated because this number is actually bigger than this number. So let's start this over. So now we know we have to go one less than this, so let's try a 3 here. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 6 is 18, if we carry the 1, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So now we're subtracting, and notice again we're just ignoring this decimal point for right now. We have to do a little bit of borrowing here. So we have 11 minus 3 is 8, we have to borrow again. So then 10 minus 8 is 2, 3 minus 0 is 3. Now we're thinking about how many times 361 goes into 3,285, and let's guess that it goes in there 9 times. 9 times 6 is 54, so we carry the 5, 9 times 3 is 27, plus 5 is 32. Now we're subtracting again. We have to borrow here. So we have 15 minus 9 is 6, and then 7 minus 4 is 3. Now we have 361 into 361. Well, that goes once, and we have a remainder of 0. So now to get our final answer, we just need to put the decimal point in. It's going to go right here above where the 1 was in our dividend. And again, we already decided our our quotient was going to be positive, so we end up with a positive 39 and 1 tenth. Now we can also estimate when we're dividing decimals just to help us know whether our answer is reasonable or not. So if we're dividing 258 and 3 tenths by 2 and 8 tenths, then here's our calculation for our exact answer. And notice that here we've already moved our decimal point in the 2.8 so that we have a whole number here. We also moved it in our dividend. And if we went through and, and worked this all out, then we would end up with this quotient. And notice our decimal point here is right above where it is in this problem. So our quotient is 92 and 25 hundredths. Now, if we want to do an estimate to see if that's a reasonable answer, then we would round both of these values. And notice here that we're going back to our original problem to do our rounding. So we're actually rounding 258 and 3 tenths to 300, and we're rounding the 2 and 8 tenths to 3. Well, 300 divided by 3 would give us 100. So, and again, the 100 is in the same ballpark as the quotient that we got of 92 and 25 hundredths. So that means that's a reasonable answer. Now let's do our own example. So if we're dividing 18 and 5 tenths by 2 and 5 tenths, Again, we're going to move our decimal point over, so let's rewrite that. That makes it 25 on the outside and 185 on the inside. And 25 goes in there about 7 times, so we have 7 times 5 is 35. If we carry the 3 here, we have 2 times 7 is 14 plus 3 is 17. So we're subtracting, we subtract we get 10, and now notice in our 
dividend here, that's where our decimal point is because this is a whole number now. So now 25 doesn't go into 10 because 25 is bigger than 10, but we can keep writing zeros out here as far as we want to. So we can we can carry the zero down here and now we're seeing how many times 25 goes into 100. It would go in there four times. So now we have our final answer and we're going to put our decimal point there. So we have 7.4 as our quotient. Now if we wanted to do a quick estimate of this, if we were rounding these values, the 18.5 we could round to 20, the 2.5, we could round to 3, and then if we divide 20 by 3, that goes in there about 6 times, and we end up with 6 point something. Again, the point is that it's in the ballpark. Now we have patterns with powers of 10, just like we did for multiplication. So if we're dividing by a power of 10, like 10, 100, 1000, and so on, when we divide by it, it's going to move our decimal point one place to the left. So here we had one zero, moved it one place to the left. Three zeros, moved our decimal point three places to the left. So we move our decimal point to the left the same number of places as there are zeros in our power of 10 that we're dividing by. And this is the same pattern as when we were multiplying by a power of 10 that was smaller than 1. Here's an example. If we're dividing 463 and 7 tenths by 100, there are two zeros here. That's the same as multiplying this times 1 hundredth. When we did this with multiplication, that meant we moved our decimal point to the left two places. So from here to here, it moved over two places. Let's do a couple of examples. If we divide 1 and 33 hundredths by 10, that has 1 zero. That means it's going to go, our decimal point is going to go one place to the left. That means it's going to move from here to here. That gives us an answer of 133 thousandths. Same thing with this one. Here we have four zeros. That means we're moving four places to the left. Since we're starting out with a whole number here, the decimal point is actually right there after the 6. So if we move that 4 places to the left, there's 1, 2, 3, 4. So our decimal point is going to go there and we're going to have to write a 0 in right there. This is still negative because we only had one negative number here. So we have negative and then a 0 before the decimal point and we have 1 that we put in after the decimal point and then our three other digits. Okay, now we're going to evaluate some expressions where we have replacement values that have decimals in them. So our replacement values are for x, 2 and 3 hundredths, y is negative 3 tenths, and z is 7 and 3 tenths. So if we have z divided by y, then we're replacing the z with 7.3. We're replacing the y with negative 3 tenths. So let's look at this in this form. And again, since we have a positive and a negative value here, we know our, pro our quotient is going to be negative. So we're not going to worry about that negative sign until we get to the end of this. Now since our divisor is not a whole number, then we're going to move our decimal point over one in each. So that actually gives us three on the outside and 73 on the inside. Now we can do our division. Three goes into seven twice. That gives us a 60 down here. And if we subtract, we get 13. Then three goes into 13 four times. 4 times 3 is 12. If we subtract, we get 1. And in this one, we didn't have directions to do this in the problem, but we're going to carry this out to the tenth place so that we can round it to the nearest whole number. So now, if we look at this, we would have 1 
divided by 3. In order to be able to divide that, we need to add another 0 here. So now 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9, so we have another 1. So now we've taken this out to, notice where our decimal point is right here. We've taken it out to the tenths place. If we want to round it to the nearest whole number, or if we want to round to the ones place, then this would be just 24. Now let's do z divided by x, and for this one, let's round our quotient to the tenths place. So we're replacing the z with 7.3 and the x with 2.03. Here's what our problem will look like. Now again, since our divisor is not a whole number, we're going to move this over two decimal places, and that means we have to move this two decimal places. Our decimal point goes right there, and that means we have to put another zero in there. So let's rewrite this. Now we have 203 on the outside and 730 on the inside. So now if we just think about the 2 and the 7 here, 2 goes into 7 3 times, so that means 203 probably goes into 730 about 3 times. So we have 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now we're subtracting, we have to do a little bit of borrowing here. So now we have 10 minus 9 is 1, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 7 minus 6 is 1. Now again, here's where our decimal point is, so let's go ahead and write it in here just so that we can keep track of that. If we want to round our quotient to the tenths place, that means we're going to have to keep going a little bit. And 203 is bigger than 121, so we're going to put another zero in here, and then we're comparing 203 to 1210. And I'm going to estimate that it goes in there five times. 5 times 3 is 15, carrying the 1, and 5 times 2 is 10. Now we're subtracting. Ten minus 1 is 9. Now we end up with 195, and again, it's smaller than 203. So we have to put another 0 in there and then we have to estimate how many times 203 will go into 1950. Well, it won't go in there 10 times, so let's estimate that it would go in there 9 times. 9 times 3 is 27. Carry the 2. We get a 2 there, and then 9 times 2 is 18. Now again, when we subtract, we're having to borrow. and we get 123. Now we wanted to round our quotient to the tenths place, which means we had to take this out to the hundreds place so that we knew how to round. So for rounding this to the tenths place, since this digit is a 9, that gives us 3 and 6 tenths. We can also solve problems di by dividing decimals, and this one actually looks like a lot like what we just did. We're going to divide 894 thousandths by negative 41 thousandths, and we're going to round the quotient to the nearest hundredth. So that means we could write this out a couple different ways. We have this number divided by this number. Now we do know that our quotient is going to be negative because we have one positive and one negative value. So now if we write this out this way, now notice that our divisor is not a whole number. To make a whole number, we're going to have to move our decimal point over three places. So we also have to move this decimal point over three places. That actually gives us 41 on the outside and 894 on the inside. Now we're comparing 41 and 89. That should go in there twice. If we multiply that, it gives us 82. 
Now if we subtract, we end up with 74. Well, 41 will only go into 74 once. So if we subtract here, we get 33. Now again, since our 894 here was a whole number, our decimal point is actually right there. Let's go ahead and put the decimal point in our quotient so we don't forget. Now, since 41 is bigger than 33, we're going to have to add a zero here. That way we can keep going past our decimal point. So 41 would go into 330 about eight times. Eight times one is eight, and then eight times four is 32. So if we subtract here, we just end up with two. Now again, 41 is larger than 2, so we'd have to add a 0 here. But 41 is still larger than 20, so we have to add another 0. The first 0 we added would correspond to this place. But that didn't work, we had to add another 0, so now we're actually in this place. So let's put a 0 in there just as a placeholder. So the place we're looking for is right here. So 41 would go into 200. It wouldn't go in there quite five times. So let's see what 4 does. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. Then if we subtract, and we're going to have to borrow here. So 10 minus 4 is 6, and 9 minus 6 is 3. OK, now let's look at what we were trying to do. We wanted to round our quotient to the nearest hundredth, which means that we needed to go out one place further than that so we could do our rounding. And we're there, we've gone out to this, the thousandths place. So now we can round this. Since 4 is less than 5, then we just leave this digit the same as it is, and we drop that one. So we end up with 21 and 80 hundredths. That's rounded to the nearest hundredth.